One of the cronies that Donald Trump decided to pardon was his former chief political strategist, Steve Bannon, who was facing charges for literally stealing money through lying to Trump's base about building a border wall. So uh, an investigation revealed that Biden um, you know, was charged in August uh, with duping thousands of donors who believed their money would be used to fulfill Trump's chief campaign promise to build a wall along the southern border. Instead, he allegedly diverted over a million dollars paying a salary to one campaign official and personal expenses for himself. His co-defendants uh, were not pardoned. Now the organizers of the We Build the Wall group portrayed themselves as eager to help the president build a big, beautiful barrier along the US-Mexico border. As he promised during the 2016 campaign, they raised more than $25 million from thousands of donors and pledged that 100% of that money would be used for the project. But as we all know, according to the criminal charges, much of the money never made it to the wall. Instead, it was used to line the pockets of group members, including Steve Bannon. So not only did Steve Bannon do something criminal, he did something criminal that negatively impacts Trump's base and Trump decided to pardon him. Now, he pardoned criminals like Steve Bannon and refused to pardon people like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, just something to keep in mind. Um, but before I give you some more details uh, about Steve Bannon and why we should continue looking out for this guy and others like him, like Tucker Carlson, I, I wanna get your thoughts, Jenk. Yeah, look, should Steve Bannon go to jail? Of course. And so I was looking forward to his trial. Couldn't happen to a better guy, meaning a more evil guy who deserves it more. Having said that, I don't have any sympathy for his victims. You couldn't figure out that Steve Bannon was gonna steal your money. You're a schmuck. And a fool and his money are easily parted. And so, and then Trump, who is another crook, pardons his crook friend Steve Bannon for stealing your money. Well, that's what Trump's doing right now. Uh, we've told you a hundred times in the emails where he's raising money for his uh, so-called defense and stop the steal and all that nonsense that he was doing. It says that the first five thousand dollars isn't going to go to his defense at all, and he could literally pocket it uh, by giving it to his uh, properties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They clearly lay it out. They say. That in essence is saying, Trump's gonna keep the money, you idiot, and you all gave it to him anyway. And so, and by the way, if you ask his victims right now, I'm sure some of them feel duped and are angry. But I bet you a huge percentage of Steve Bannon's victims are probably thinking, I, yeah, well, I don't care, man. I, I bet the wall was built. I was probably built on the moon or something. I mean, if Bannon and Trump agree, uh, sure, man, take my money and, you know, and, and just. Do anything you want with it. Okay, then screw you. And then I'm glad he robbed you. Yeah, and the thing that's really stood out about Steve Bannon, really since he became part of the political discussion in 2015 and 2016. Is just like the, his willingness to use buzzwords and rhetoric that appeals to the disenfranchised people who have been dealing with a rigged economic system. He really presents himself as this man of the people who's looking out for the average American or the average worker. You know, someone who's willing to speak out against the establishment and hold the elite accountable. But at the end of the day, Steve Bannon and people like him, like Tucker Carlson, do not care about the little guy. They don't care about workers. They don't care about any of it. They use that kind of rhetoric. I mean, this is evidence. The fact that he's willing to steal from people under these false pretenses is, is evidence of that. Um, but what they do is they engage in this kind of rhetoric to appeal to people, even on the left, to unfortunately fall for the bait. They take the bait and they think, no, no, well, Bannon and people like him are definitely better than the neoliberals because they actually want to do something to create a more equitable system. Um, no, that's not the case. Uh, so I actually want to go to uh, our first video on this where he's speaking to uh, Red Scare. This is a podcast um, to talk about his, you know, his anti establishment ideology. Let's listen. Remember, I was I advocated strongly. We have a increase in the taxes for the upper uh, uh, the upper income uh, group when we did the 2017 tax um, 
play, you know, my plan, which was blown up, but it was number one, you increase the taxes for the upper bracket and all corporate, the tor- corporate tax cut and the three trillion dollars of repatriated cash came back and, you, and they had a incentivize. First off, no, no, uh, no stock buybacks and no dividends. Uh, and, and absolutely verboten, and and really the money had to go. You had an incentive for capital expenditures for capital equipment, and particularly in manufacturing, and you got a better deal if you put that uh, capital equipment into into the urban areas. If you did it into St. Louis and New York, and you know if you put actual capital expenditures back into these areas, so you kind of built. Uh, facilities, particularly modern fourth industrial revolution uh, manufacturing facilities in these urban areas, which I think would have gotten us over a lot of these problems, particularly the 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 the, the horror of what the stock buybacks uh, did. So some people eat up everything he just said there, as if he's actually being genuine in uh, wanting to do something to create a fairer economic system for average people. That is not what he actually cares to engage in. Uh, what he does care to engage in is populist, a populist nationalist movement, which he was pretty open about during this exchange with Nigel Farage. Let's watch. If you're interested, what I'd like to do is set up something and we'll, I'll fund it somehow that I think, and I think you're the perfect guy. We help knit together this populist nationalist movement throughout the world. Because guys in Egypt are coming to me, the Modi's guys in India, Dutarte, you know, and, and we get Orban and, and even thing, and we're somehow some sort of convening authority for conferences and stuff like that, so we can get okay. ideas out there. I mean, do you think that's a do you think that's a it's, worthwhile thing? Yeah, or think, it's, I'm not, well, nobody's got it, nobody's um, doing it right now. It's not being done. The reason we're gonna beat Corbyn and Sanders is they're not prepared to take on the powers that be. We're fire breathers. I mean, we're taking on the establishment every day. You've taken on the Tory party. I'm taking on the Republican party. So that's what his number one goal is. Uh, He wants to shut down borders. He wants uh, countries to have these uh, nationalist leaders. I mean, he mentioned people like Duterte uh, from the Philippines who encouraged extrajudicial killings uh, by cops where they can literally just murder anyone on the streets based on their suspicion that they might have possession of or are selling drugs. That's what's happening in the Philippines and he's celebrating that as if that's a good thing and then he mentioned and some other um, incredibly disgusting people like Modi, who has been vicious uh, to the Muslim community in India, vicious to uh, Muslims in Kashmir. Um, you know, he loves Jair Bolsonaro. The list goes on and on. And then, Jenk, um, if you'll let me indulge in just one more video, uh, this is what Steve Bannon really thinks about private businesses. Uh, and this is a question about Medicare for all and how he really feels about it. Again, this is a reference from the Red Scare podcast. Do you support single payer health care? I support a. I came out of a system. My dad was a lineman for the phone company before he got into lower level management, and uh, you know we had our health care by the phone company. I still think, just given the efficiency and all that, that the best way to do this is still through. Uh, companies and through private insurance. Um, I just think it's a more effective way. I do, we have to get a system in which everybody's covered. We can't have the, what they call the donut hole or the gap. Every, and so somehow we have to strap together that system. We, we have to have a system in which everybody has coverage and it has to be real coverage. It can't be where the deductibles are so high that effect is just catastrophic insurance. Uh, but listen, I'm not trying to hardball you, but with yeah. all due respect, I mean, how do you achieve that through uh, private, private companies healthcare. and private interests? I just don't think, I'm, I'm not a believer that in Medicare for all that we could at the time afford it. Although now that we're talking about, we have had a change. <laughs> we have had a change in the last couple of weeks in that now we've got, and it, when you when you talk about the trains of dollars that we've put to work at the Federal Reserve and the, the trains of dollars are going to take the bridge, maybe that changes it on the other side of this. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. That's who Steve Bannon is. That's who Tucker Carlson is. And if you're on the left and you take the bait and you think you can actually join some sort of broad coalition with these disgusting racist nationalists, just understand that they're using you. 
and it's a fool's errand to think that they actually want to root out all of the systemic failures that we've been trying to change for decades now. Tucker Carlson and Steve Bannon have absolutely no problem stealing from the poor to give to the rich. All they want to do though is to appeal to the left by using rhetoric that appeals to them so they can successfully implement their nationalist agenda. That's who they are. Yeah, so a couple of things guys. In the first clip, it sounded like he was agreeing with us in terms of progressive and populist politics. But there's two things that have to be noted there that is super important. Number one is they didn't do any of that. Trump had four years and talked about how strong he was and how what a great manager he was and how he's always winning. Yes, somehow, golly gee, they couldn't find a way to win or even propose any of the things that Steve Bannon mentioned. So they never even proposed raising taxes on corporations or on the wealthy. In fact, they did the exact opposite. They did a massive $2 trillion tax cut on corporations and the wealthiest people in America. So if he meant the first clip and we could actually pass legislation with votes with people like that, if they're agreeing with us on policy, I will take their votes. But I'm not going to agree with them preemptively when my own eyes and actual facts show you they did the exact opposite. So what does that show you? That shows you they're unbelievable liars. And they're lying to you to try to trick you into thinking, oh, well, they might be looking out for the average. Oh my God, look, Steve Bannon wants to hold the rich accountable. That's an unbelievable sick joke. So he could rob you of your money and he could get more tax cuts for his rich friends and multinational corporations. So that, that's the facts. There's no question of what Trump did, and you could look it up anywhere, okay? Now, Bannon later will lie to you again. Uh, and say, oh, golly gee, I had lost power within the Trump organization and Trump wasn't listening to him anymore. Really? Then why did you get pardoned by Trump? So apparently he was listening to you. And so then they add in the racist part. The Camp of the Saints is the, he says is his favorite book. Camp of the Saints is where uh, ultra nationalist right wingers go and murder immigrants, uh, particularly Indians in that case. Uh, he has said loathsome things about Asians, Muslims, you name it. The fake progressive populism is a disguise for their nationalist racism. And yep. so they don't mean a word of it. If if they you're gonna vote with us, Hawley, Cruz, etc., on things where we actually get uh, hold bankers accountable and and uh, increase taxes on corporations, I'll take your vote all day long. <laughs> Otherwise, shut up, you like not only are you obvious liars, you committed fraud. You're a crook and a criminal who was going to go to prison unless your corrupt friend Donald Trump helped you evade justice like he does with all of his corrupt criminal cronies. That's who you are, Steve Bannon. Bingo, and I, I'm just mentioning all of this because this is what we need to look out for moving forward during the Biden administration, where I'm sure Tucker Carlson will make similar arguments moving forward. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.